Good morning, good morning. I greet you in the marvelous name of Jesus. Here at the Steeper Chase Baptist Church, located at 7016 Steeper Chase Plaza Drive, under the awesome leadership of Dr. Pastor Antonio T. Dixon, Sr. I am Deacon Washington, and I will be bringing your Sunday school, Sunday school overview today. And today's lesson is, if I can find it, the Paschal Lamb Lives. Our lesson comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through, verses 1 through 10. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Amen, amen. It's a good lesson today. Let us say a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another awesome day. And we especially thank you for this day, the day that you gave us another chance to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And we just ask you right now, let this word that you want to give us today dwell within our mind, body, and soul so that we can be all about your business of kingdom building. In this we pray, amen. So we've been talking about, you know, this, this, this happy Easter this morning to everyone. Happy Easter. And uh, we've been talking about uh, the, the Passover and all that stuff, the events coming up to, to the day Jesus went to Calvary and laid it all down for our sins and not his own. He laid it all down for us. So you know there were some things that Jesus you know, he had to go through, you know, and we've been talking about all that. And we just really been talking about God's master plan, you know. It's, it's, it's whatever excuse we had, whatever we came up with, God already knew and he had already planned for it. And it's just amazing, it's just amazing just to see, you know, how awesome God is. And we still don't even want to believe in the things that he do. You know, last week we talked about the, the Last Supper. You know, I really call it the, 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 the last team meeting that Jesus had with his disciples. So he had his last team meeting. He laid down some things that was going to happen, what he had to do, and he fed them and all that. You know, they sat around on the floor, and they had the last team meeting before, before Jesus had to go and do what he had to do. And know, uh, and so our lesson picks up today here in Matthew 28. You know, Jesus, he done went to the cross. He done hung. He done, he done, they done got him down there. They put him in the tomb. And now he's on that third day. He's getting up early on Sunday morning. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And our first, we got three outlines for our lesson today. The first outline is an empty tomb. The second outline is an urgent message. And the third outline is a joyful response. A joyful response. Amen. Let's read our first outline, verses 1 through 4. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Marys went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guard was so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. Amen, amen. Now remember, Jesus said on the third day he was going to get up, and he was going to do what he was supposed to do. So you know the king... He want to make sure that that don't happen. He so so you read back in Matthew 27 at the end, and they'll tell you what he, I need you to put a guard on there, a couple of guards. I need you to put a, uh, 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 I need you to tell the God, I need you to do something so we can't let them go in and steal it and say he rose. So the governor put his seal on it. They put a big rock in front of it. They put some guards out there. They want to make sure Jesus stayed in the tomb. But just like he said on that Thursday, Sunday morning, he got up, he was gone, he was handling his business, what he had to do before he ascended to heaven and sat on the throne with the Father again. So, so there came a violent <coughs> earthquake, they say. And, and look at the angel. The angel didn't come down there just to move a rock. And he came down, moved a rock, and he sat on it. 
he, he just sat on it. Like, he, he knew what he, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm moving this rock out of the way because we got some things to do. We got some things to do right now. You know, this, 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 this message right here is, is letting us know that it's time. It's time to go spread the good news of the gospel. It, it's time for us to go, go tell everybody Jesus did just what he said he was going to do. You know, and that's what he's going to do. See, 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 Mary and them, and, and, and they was going back because, you know, it, it, customs and tradition was that they prepared a body for burial. And part of that was so that they can mask the odor and all that so it can decay the right way and all that good stuff, not too fast, not too. But because of, because of what Jesus went through, they didn't get a chance to make those preparations. So, so, so Mary and them said, okay, well, we're going to go early in the morning and we're going to make those preparations. And they was wondering, well, how are we going to get this big rock out of the way? How are we going to get this seal off? How are we going to get in the tomb? But like I said, Jesus' master plan, he already knew. But my deal is, why was Mary and them looking for Jesus anyway in the tomb? He already told him he's getting up. He already told him, I, I won't be there. What you going to the tomb look for me for? You could have stayed at the house and, and, and found me faster than you could have in that tomb. You know, but they going to the tomb because they want to anoint him with some earthly oils. He don't need no earth laws where he's going. <laughs> he ain't got to worry about no old. He ain't got to worry. Because remember, you know, he's going to heaven. He got to get a new body, new everything. Because you can't get in there with this one. Just like he said us. When we come up, he's going to call us up. In the twinkle of an eye, we're going to get a new body. Because we can't take this one into heaven. We got to get a new body to go into that. So I don't know why they was going there. That's sometimes that's what we do in life. We go places where we ain't got no business going. We already know when we go there, something going to go wrong, something going to go down, we're going to get in some trouble, we're going to do this and that, you know. But we knew that before we went, but we was going anyway. But why go to the tomb when Jesus already said he wasn't going to be there? So that was a waste of that time, but they went anyway. And when they got there, the angel said, hey, who you looking for? He ain't here. He, he gone where he gone. But this is what I need you to do. Gave him some instruction. I need you to get on down there and tell those disciples. Uh, Jesus got some more business to handle right now. But he going to need them to go on to Galilee. He'll meet them in Galilee. All right? That's what I need y'all to do. That's what, that's what he told them angels. <laughs> so he gave, he, he, that's what the angels told Mary and him. I, that's what I need y'all to do. You know, get the step, go on, do that. Don't worry about what's inside this tomb. We don't, we don't even need to worry about all that, you know. And so they was excited. They was, and they started running, you know. But Jesus, that wasn't good enough because she could have went back and, and said that. They, they wouldn't have believed it because they probably would have said, did you see the body? Did you go in the tomb? But Jesus confronted them himself. Hey. And they saw him, and he spoke, and they came, and they hugged him, and he told them the same thing. Look, I smoke business to hell. I need you to go tell my disciples, get ready, meet me in what you call. Got some, uh, I'm going to meet them now. Got some instructions for them, and then we're going to do what we got to do. we going to do what we got to do, you know. But see, this is, right now, this is, this, 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 this right here is telling us now, it's time to spread the good news of the gospel. It's time to let everybody know Jesus did just what he said he was going to do. And this was very important. And you see that evident today why it was so important. Because, because when, the, when the, the, those centurion soldiers went back and told what happened, well, the first thing out of the government mind was, well, we're going to have to come up with a lie so we can't, we can't let this get out. See, see, God knew that was going to happen. Because remember, it, it happened, remember, in, in, in the Church of Corinth. That's what they started doing. Because, you know, the Church of Corinth was supposed to have been, the, supposed to have been the, the mastermind church. It was supposed to have been the okay, you know, it was. But they got beside themselves, and they started doing those things. Well, who's the best preacher, Paul, or what you call, or who's this and that, and who's over that, and who's over this? Because they started, they started that. Because if Jesus didn't get up, Ain't no use of us being here in church today. We could have stayed at the house. 
big snake, ain't one of you coming here. If he didn't get up, I, you know, it's amazing. They say Jesus didn't get up, but Jesus raised Lazarus. Uh, why would that? How could he get somebody else up and can't get himself up? That, that don't make sense. You know, I'm going to get Lazarus up. Me and Lazarus going to hang out. But then I can't get up after I tell you I'm going to get up. And that's what this going is. So, 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 so they go, they get the instruction from the angel. They get the instruction from Jesus himself. And, and then they go back. But this is where the, this is time now to start spreading the good news of the gospel. Jesus had did just what he said he was going to do. Because he know God know what's coming. He knows that we was going to do everything and to try to discredit Jesus. Because Jesus is not. Like Buddha, he's not like Mohammed, he's not like, no, he ain't like, Jesus is, you know, when Peter said, you are the king, the son of God, that means the king, so that means ain't nobody else even close to you, when you say the king, the king, you know, you know when, you, when you're studying the lesson, Deacon Snee, you, you think you know some stuff, oh, I know, I, but you find out you really don't know nothing. I'd be like, man, I, I, I'm still learning. You know, you learn that words, you know, for, and for you English teachers, you know that word. They have those prefixes and all these uh, uh, words of origin and all that. So you can, you can like, like, like pent. It means high and all that. But if you put that prefix on repent, that means you got to, that's why God tell you to repent, repent to him. And repent don't just mean repent over him. You got to repent to the most high. That's what it stands for, like penthouse, penthouse on the top. That's why God tell you to repent. I'm up here. You got, you got to look high when you repent. You got to mean it. it. You learn stuff like that when you study the word of God, that deep sleep. <laughs> you learn, yeah, yeah, you learn stuff like that when you, when you, when you but here it is, you know, God, and you know, it, when you study it, it shows you how how it shows you just what Jesus, how powerful Jesus was and where he stood, and how we just disregard who Jesus totally was, because you know, the religious leaders the one that really had a problem with Jesus, the government didn't. Cause remember the government, the government conducted themselves almost according to the Bible. And so, and, and I say it this way, we in the United States conduct ourselves in a democratic process. We vote president in, we vote our leader in, the leader picks his cabinet, and then the cabinet turns around and tells the leader, advise the leader what he needs to do and not do. Now we all trying to get on. We all in chaos because we don't think they doing what we ask them to do and all this. Well, if you look at those kingdoms, well, Pharaoh, let's just take Pharaoh. He inherited the kingdom because this comes from a line. His father was the king. He come the king, the king on down to the king. He was inherited. Then they picked their cabinet. Now, here's the difference. They tell their cabinet what they want them to go tell the people, right? This is what's going to happen. This is how much taxes we're going to pay. This is how we're going to do this. This is how I need you to go tell the people. And that's what is cabinet, and that's what they do. And if it don't nobody want to buy it, buy it, then you got to face the law. That's how they had the control. Well, that's the same thing with God. <laughs> this belonged to him. <laughs> This is his world. You know, that's why we always ask, how can we get separation of state, church and state, when the God set this up as a government? When he left here, he left his church in charge. The church was his government, not his religious group. Our job was to go and spread the good news of the gospel. Our job was to be and tell the world how you're supposed to conduct yourself and make it into heaven. But we did just like Adam. We fought for our independence. See, Adam lost. See, 
Adam was in paradise. He didn't have to worry about nothing. God said, I got everything you need, you want, just ask. All I need you to do is cultivate the garden, keep it looking pretty, do this and that. But just leave that tree alone. That's all you got to do. But Eve was looking so good, he saw he wanted his independence. And when we when he fought for his independence, we lost life. That's the way the world works. Just like America. Christopher Columbus say he found America. But when he came over, remember, it was a colony. It wasn't America yet. So we were still under the British rule. The British. And so the only way we came from out that, we fought for our independence to get out from under the British rule. And so now... We are setting our own standards for life for not doing, and, 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 and so we don't have to listen to British rule. But when you take that and put it on God's side, we're doing what we want to do and not what God asks us to do. And that's why the world is in the chaos it's in right now. Because we just, we, we totally just took him out of the picture when we asked for our independence. He fought for independence. What Adam did, he, he, he wanted his independence. He's going to eat that apple. And we've been fighting for life ever since. Fighting for life. But the thing about it is, what, what God started out with in the beginning, he's bringing it back. He's bringing it back in the end. Now, let's read our second outline, an urgent message. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus. He was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then they go quickly and tell the disciple he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. All right. Like I said, right now, angel came down, did what he had to do, sat on the rock, put fear in God's heart. They didn't know what to do. You know, they were so... They were so in shock, you know, but you'll be in shock with something that amazing. You don't know what's going on. You, you don't know what to do, you, you know. And so now the angel gave them instruction, and then they went back and did the instruction. Remember, Jesus came. He did what he had to do, and then he went to Galilee because he had to give the disciples their, their final instruction to what they had to do to, to, to deliver and, and, and spread throughout the world. And so he had to give them the instruction because he knew what was coming? He knew that the king, they was going to plot out to stop this, the the dispel the, the, the truth. They got to put those lies out there. The disciples stole them. And so he so down, he was hunting all of the disciples. So, you know, all the disciples was martyred, head cut off, all this good stuff. They, they just got beat down and all of that. But the, the, the thing about it is that remains the truth is, they died saying the same thing. Jesus is alive. He has risen. None of them recanted on that. None of them said anything other than that. And they died in that word. You know, and so that's the response. But Mary, and that's what they did. They, they worshiped him. They went and told the disciple what was going on. That's us run out of time. All right. Last outline, a joyful response. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them greeting. He said, they called, him, called to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brothers that they go into Galilee, and they shall see me. Amen. So, like I said, Mary them got up. They went to do a job. Don't know why. Jesus told them they weren't going to be there. He told them they weren't going to be there. But they went there anyway. So the good thing, I guess you say, you know, I always say, if, I guess if you want something to get out real fast, you know, you got to tell a woman. Dick Sneak, you know, we'll forget by the time we get in our car, drive here, we been in, we get to the store, we've been in forgot. You know, the car, where did you tell me to get? I, I didn't write it down, you know. But, you know, but they did just what the angel told them to do. The angel verified when they left. Jesus showed himself to them, verified, 
And they went on and told those disciples, look, we done met this angel. He showed us. On the way home, we met Jesus. He told us. Now we're here and telling y'all Jesus is risen. He's alive. Y'all got to get to Galilee. We got things to do. And the one that, see, we, we, when you got well, you got certain ladies that tell me and certain, ain't no arguing with it, you know. It's just, well, let's pack up, let's go. <laughs> let's pack up, let's go, you know. So, yeah, some, you know, some of you may, like, you may argue with, you may try to get some, uh, but some women, when they say something, you know, well, ain't no arguing with her. Let's go on and let's, let's get going, fellas. We got to go see Jesus. I ain't want even no arguing out of that. And, but this this is lesson here that's basically saying, you know, he's up. It's time now to spread the good news of the gospel. Because the kings, they are trying to beat you to the punch. And we got to get, you know, we got to get out there first. We got to control the narrative. Because, you know, like I said, Jesus was the king of all kings. You know, so when somebody say he's like Muhammad, a ain't even the same, not even the same. He's the king. I mean, he's above everybody. Remember when he was about to be born, the king, I can't call his name, but the king said, hey, you hear about this king about to be born? He's more powerful than me. I need you to find out where he's going to be born at so we can kill him. But we got to get rid of the king. They knew that. Everybody knew he was the king, but the Jews, who he loved so, that he put up with for. And we do the same thing today. We forget about what he did for us. We forget about the price that he paid for us. Understand, when you die, you go to the grave. The only way you're getting out of the grave Jesus say so. Oh, well, you got it. We come to the funeral, we set up him, for fall all in the cast on the floor. Got the final say so. So, good lesson today. Time to spread. All this saying is time to get the good news of the gospel out. You know, I have established my church. You know, the, those disciples, those that are the church. The church is my government agency. The world is supposed to act according to the way you set the standards. And right now, our standards is it's not good. You can see here in Shreveport, you know, our children raising, raising the parents in some household, you know, doing what they want to do. You know, we got killing every day, every day. Had one last night, unnecessary. You know, I hope not, you know. But it's over just, you know, nonsense, you know, you know. We got laws in effect that 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 we don't enforce, but we want to make more laws. You know, I always say let's enforce the ones we got before we make more. But that one ain't working. Well, that one ain't working because the people we got in charge enforcing them ain't enforcing them correctly. You know, this ain't an emotional deal. This is you know, if God had done everything on emotion, we'd be in uh, we'd probably be in bad shape. But it was about business. You know, God said, this is about, I don't mean no business, but if you ain't going to serve me, 
I can't let you into heaven. That's just, just the way it works. You know, but I love you. I'm going to do everything I can do for you to get in there. And we do that today. We, we do that. But we got to do a better job of uh, educating our young people. We got to start doing a better job of being an example that this world belongs to God and not to us. But we continue on to keep thinking that, that, that we can defy God's sovereignty. But in the end, we'll find out that it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. See, Jesus, and Jesus came down here and did what he had to do. He's in heaven now. I say he's up there now. He, he's regenerating. You know, he got, you know, down here, he went through his stripes and things. So he had to go, he had to go back to heaven and heal up and get his strength back because he know he's got to come back for an even bigger task when he come back because he got to come back and battle the devil when he come back. He got to come back and battle over Satan himself. You know, got to fight the army. He got to do all this good stuff. So he got to be, he got to get strong. And then once he get everything settled, then that's when, you know, heaven is going to be established back down here once again with eternal life. You know, the question is, will you be a part of that heaven? At the rate we're going, ain't going to be many people there. It's going to be a lot of room unless we make a drastic change between here and now. Amen? Amen. Truth is a good lesson today. And uh, happy Easter to everyone. And uh, Today is my wife's birthday, too, so when y'all see her, tell her happy birthday. You know, that'll give me some brownie points, Sister Curry, though. <laughs> and uh, we go continue on spreading the good news of the gospel, just like the book told us today. You know, and uh, that's a good thing. There, go, uh, there, there she go. There go our praying sister. There's one of them. Well, that's all we need is. All we need is one. That's all we need. That's right. Welcome to Steeplechase Baptist Church. My name is Trent Bartley and I'm the Minister of Music here. Currently we have choir rehearsals on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. We're also wanting new choir members to come and join an ever-growing ministry. We'll see you there.
this time, let's just get ourselves in a, an attitude and a posture of prayer. You guys um, are more than welcome to, you know, get up, walk around with however you feel comfortable on praying this morning. <clears throat> Dear gracious Father, we come to you on this morning, God, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to be focused on you this morning, God. We just come to you now and we just want to say thank you, God. Lord, we just thank you for how you watched over us last night while we slept, God. We thank you, God, that you did not allow any hurt, harm, or danger to come upon us while we were resting, God. God, we thank you that while we were sleeping, that you were still working things out for us, God. We thank you that while we were resting, that you allowed us to do so peacefully, God, knowing and trusting that you were still busy, that you were still working. God, we just thank you for, for looking after our loved ones, our family and our friends, God, near and far. God, sometimes we're not able to, to reach out to those loved ones, but God, we know that you're everywhere at the same time. So God, we thank you for just being that kind of God. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, God, and just touching us with a finger of love, God. We thank you for breathing life back into our bodies on this morning, God. God, we thank you because we know, oh God, that there there were some that did not wake up this morning. So God, we thank you for just for being gracious and merciful enough to see fit that we would see another day, that we would see this Easter Sunday, God. So Lord, we just thank you for giving us another opportunity to worship and to praise and to pray, God. We thank you, God. We cannot say thank you enough, God. We thank you that you've seen beyond our faults. You've seen beyond our failures. You've seen beyond our disappointments, God, and you continue to bless us, God. Lord, we thank you that when you woke us up this morning, God, you allowed us to be able to rise up, God. Father God, we may not be able to move around the way that we are used to or like to, but God, we thank you that you've given us able bodies on this morning, especially able to push forward and, and come to the house of the Lord, God. So we thank you, God. We don't take anything for granted, God. We thank you that when we woke up this morning, oh God, we had a reasonable portion of health and strength, God. Everything, God, that you have taken us through and brought us through, God, and that the enemy has tried to destroy us with, God, we thank you that on this morning, God, we can stand here and we can say thank you, God. We can say that we made it through and it was all because of you, God. So, Lord, we thank you, God. God, we thank you that we're able to put one foot in front of the other, oh God. That we're able to lift our hands and say thank you, Lord. God, we thank you that we're able to breathe. That we're able to open our eyes and see, oh God. That we're able to open up our mouths, God, and praise your name, oh God. We thank you, Lord. For so many blessings that we do not deserve, God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that when we woke up this morning, everything was the way that we left it, God. That we had a roof over our heads, God. That we had clothes and shoes to put on our backs, God. That we had food to eat, Lord. We thank you for running water, God. We bless your holy name, oh God. We realize, God, that there are some who are not as fortunate, oh God. So, Lord, we thank you. For even these things, oh God, that sometimes we overlook, God. We thank you, oh God. And we ask that you would forgive us for not realizing just how blessed we are, God. Lord, we honor you on today, God. Lord, we thank you for being our protector and being our provider and being our strength, oh God, and being our refuge, God, and being whatever it is that we need, oh God, in our time of need, God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for being our source of everything, God. God, we thank you. Thank you that you're the reason, oh God, that we live, we breathe, we move, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We realize we cannot do anything without you, Lord. So, God, we thank you on this morning, God. God, we cannot say thank you enough for how you have healed our bodies, oh God. 
for how you have kept our minds, oh God, for how you have maintained and sustained, God. When we thought we were going to lose our minds, God, we bless your holy name, God, that we're still able, oh God. Lord, we thank you for when we didn't know how ends were going to meet, God, we thank you that you made a way out of no way, God. Thank you for making the poss impossible possible, God. Lord, we thank you. We honor you, God. You're worthy, God. Lord, how we do bless you on this morning, God. Father God, as we think back over our lives, God, and all that we've been through and all that you've done, God, we thank you, God, for even what you're doing right now, God. We thank you, God. Lord, we lift you up, God. We praise you, God. We bless you, God. We glorify your holy name, God. Oh, God, we bless you. Lord, we thank you, God. Let your will be done, God. Not our will, but your will be done, God. Help us to get out of your way and get out of our way, God. Because you know what's best for us, God. So help us to trust you, God. Father God, help us not to look with our eyes, God, but to continue to trust that you know what's best and that you're working things out for our good, God. God, we thank you for every time the enemy, God, tries to steal, kill, and destroy, God. We thank you, God, for your rest restoration, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your ministry of reconciliation, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your sacrifice that you made on our behalf, God. God, we thank you because we're not worthy, God, even knowing, God, that we would disappoint you, God, that we would fail you, God, that we wouldn't be obedient to your word, God, even knowing how we would forsake you, God. You still chose to save us. You still chose to sacrifice your only begotten son. So on this resurrection Sunday, God, we say thank you, God, for loving us like you do, God. We thank you, God, that there's nothing we can do that you would ever take your love away from us, oh God. We thank you for being that kind of God. God, we honor you on today, God. We worship God. We magnify your name, God. We say hallelujah, God. You're worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, God. Oh, God, we worship you in this place today, God. Father God, let your presence be made known in this place today, God. Father God, we come to you this morning with all of our burdens, God. Everything that's been weighing us down all week, God. Everything that's been worrying us, God. God, we lay it at your feet in the name of Jesus, God. We're surrendering it all to you on this morning, God. And we're asking and praying and believing, God, that you will do what only you can do, God. So we're thanking you, Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Father God, whoever needs healing, God, we're asking that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus, God. Father God, we're asking for healing, oh God, from the top of our heads, oh God, to the sole of our feet, oh God. Father God, we're asking for healing financially, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, God. Whatever it is, God, make us whole right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Whatever is lacking in us, oh God, we ask that you would fill us up, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, God. We honor you on this morning, God. Have your way in this place, God. Do what you want to do, oh God. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Father God, and when we stray away, oh God, help us to remember, oh God, whose we are and who we are, oh God. Let our lives be a testimony to the greatness of God, oh God. That everything that we do would be to uplift your kingdom. Oh God, we thank you on this morning, God. We cannot say thank you enough. That you haven't allowed, oh God, us to experience, oh God, what our sins deserve, God. So God, we thank you for being so merciful and so gracious, God. Oh God, you don't have to do anything, oh God, but you do, oh God, and you did, God. And we thank you, God, that even.
even right now, God, you're working out things for our good, oh God. Oh God, everything that the enemy meant for evil, God, you turned it around for our good. And God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, how we bless your name on this morning, God. Lord, we cannot say thank you enough, oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, for food, for shelter, for clothing, oh God.
Jesus, God. Whatever he needs, oh God, we're asking, oh God, that you would bless him in a way that he would know it was you without a shadow of a doubt, God. Lord, we honor you on this morning, God. We thank you. We thank you for this place of worship, God. We thank you for everything, oh God, that you have in store for us. Not just on this day, oh God. We bless your name, God. We thank you for the man of God that you have blessed us with, God. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to, to strengthen him, oh God. That you would bless him with whatever he stands in the need of, God. God, that as he prepares to share, oh God, what you have given him, oh God. That he will stand there and proclaim the gospel boldly, God. God, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you, God. Oh, how we do thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we do bless you, God. Oh, God, we do thank you, Lord. God, we pray for those, God, who have not been obedient and not been consistent. God, we pray for their hearts, oh, God. We pray for their minds, oh, God. Father God, whatever is, is telling them, oh, God, that it's too late and that they can't come back, oh, God. Let them know, God, that it's never too late, that it's never too late, that you're waiting, oh God, that all they have to do is make a decision and you're waiting with open arms. God, we thank you for being that kind of God. Oh God, we do bless you, God. We ask that you would forgive us for all of our sins, God. Forgive us for not trusting you in the way that we should. Forgive us for not being obedient to your word, oh God. To the calling on our lives, to the assignments and the tasks that you have given us. God, just forgive us, oh God. God, we do praise your holy name. God, we thank you. We bless you, God. We honor you on today, God. We cannot thank you enough for Jesus Christ, God. God, we thank you. Oh, God, we honor you. We bless your name, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you. It's in Jesus' wonderful and matchless and holy name. We pray, thank God, and amen. Amen. And life is what the living just cause it lives. Oh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. Oh, fear is gone because I know oh, 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 my future and life is what the living just cause it lives because he lives Come on and help me. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All the fear is gone because I know oh, who holds my future. Come on, can we give God praise? Come on, can we give God praise? This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful day. 
I said, what a wonderful day it is to be in worship and to be in the house of prayer one more time as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here this morning who will declare he is alive? I wish I had some help. He, he lives today. Yeah, yeah, our God is not dead, but he is, he is alive and he is alive forevermore. We welcome those of you who have assembled yourselves here in the sanctuary. We welcome those uh, who are watching us virtually. Can we welcome them into our sanctuary we thank god for each and every one of you those of you who are even making your way to church uh, if you ought to be in church any day it ought to be the day amen you ought to press your way uh, to the house of god uh, to celebrate what god did for us through his son jesus christ uh, he died for us amen conquer death that we might live eternally and we are forever grateful to our God for that down at the cross where my Savior died down where from clean sing from sin I cried there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name oh i'm singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name oh that to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name oh i am so one trust this saved from sin jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in, singing glory to his name. Oh, I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, singing glory to his name. Oh, that to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name oh i'm singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name oh that to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name come on put your hands together this morning singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name oh there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name Woke up this morning with my mind, my mind, stay. 
Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind in Washington. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind in Washington. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I'm walking and talking with my mind, my mind stay. You know I'm walking and talking with my mind, my mind stay. Oh, I'm walking and talking with my mind, my mind stay. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I'm singing and praying with my mind, my mind stay. Yes, I'm singing and praying with my mind, my mind stay. Oh, I'm singing and praying with my mind, my mind stay. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Keep your mind, your mind stay. Oh, it ain't no harm to keep your mind, your mind stay. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stay. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind. Yeah, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind stayed. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hand together. Jesus! 
Good morning. Let's just praise the Lord for He is worthy. Worthy. For He is worthy. Worthy. I'd like to say Happy Resurrection Day to to everyone. This is a day that we all should be in church to celebrate what He has done for us. There should be no excuses today. Shall we stand for our devotional reading? Bible says he first loved us. I'd like to call your attention to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and the fifth verse. And it reads, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we were healed may the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word shall we pray dear father in heaven we come to you this morning in the precious name of Jesus father God we come with no excuses this morning for all that you have done for us. Father God, we come realizing that that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. And Father, we come to say if we had a thousand tongues and we could speak with them all at one time that we could never thank you enough for what you've done for us. Yes. Father God, as we think about the cross, the cross that you bear for us, Father. Father God, it seems to some that it's just a, a story. But Father God, it was an awful, awful thing that they done to you. It was cruel. It was as bitter as bitter can get. But, Father God, you endured because of us, Father, because of the love that you have for us. And we just want to say thank you this morning. But, Father God, sometimes we forget. We forget how good you've been to us. But, Father God, we pray this morning that you would hear our prayers. Yes, yes. And not just hear it, Father, but we ask that you would please, sir, accept it. But, Father God, you said in your word that it is for you to accept and you to deny. Father God, we ask asking that you would accept us this morning. Father God, we're tired this morning. Our bodies are tired. Our minds are tired. But, Father God, you are still God all by yourself. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Father God, we could have been a thousand other places this morning, but you seem fit for us to be in the house of prayer this morning. And Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Father God, our souls are running over with joy this morning. Father God, we pray that this service would be accepted unto you, Father. Father God, don't allow us to sit down on what you've done for us, Father. Just as the angel said on that Sunday morning, hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Thank you! Thank you for what you've done, Father. Thank you if you never do another thing. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father God, we're praying for your spirit this morning. Yes. Father God, you are a good God. Father God, praying for our pastor this morning. 
pray that you would continue to strengthen him, Father. Father God, continue to give him wisdom from on high, Father. Father God, give him a word for your people this morning. For Father God, somehow, some way we seem to want to sit down on you and stay home on you, Father. But Father God, you've been too good to us, Father, for us to sit down, Father. Give him a word. Give him a word this morning, Father. Father God, we ask that you would bless our children. Bless them in a special way, Father. Father God, we've tried our best. We're trying to do our best, Father. But Father God, we know that your word says that they may part from you, but not far from you, Father. Father God, your word even says that, the, that they don't fall far from the flock, Father. Father God, we're praying for those who are going to bring a message this morning. Father God, we're praying for the choir. Father God, give them strength this morning. For Father God, we know that we all are going through and have went through. But we know that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. You said that you have the power to to move mountains. Father God, we thank you. Thank you. The bastard's name of Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. and know we serve a great God today. Yes. How many know God is great? God is great. God is great just because he is God. Just because he decided to die for our sins, for the remission of our sins, that we may have a right to stand right here today to worship and praise God today. Because if we not die, where will we be? The greatness, the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love, the love that he shows is unconditional. The power, the power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. Come on, let's do it again. The greatness, the of the Lord is inconceivable. The love that he shows, the love that he shows is unconditional. The power, the power of the Lord is unbeatable. The Lord is unbeatable. The love that He shows, the love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord, the power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we do it again. The greatness, the greatness of the Lord is unbeatable. The love, the love that He shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God. God is great. God is great. And great men too. And great men too. God is great. Come on, let's take it up. Too. 
Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on, give God. Come on, come on, come on. If you're excited about being in worship, excited about being excited about what God has done for you. I ain't talking about two years ago. I'm talking about just this morning. He woke you up, started you on your way. That's enough to tell God, thank you. Amen to God. How we bless God for another opportunity and another chance to be in worship one more time. Let me say welcome again. Welcome, welcome, welcome to those of you who have assembled yourselves here in this sanctuary and to those who are joining us virtually. We welcome you to the Steeplechase Baptist Church and to the Steeplechase Experience as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. He died, but he got up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said he died, but but early one Sunday morning. <laughs> Don't miss your shout this morning. He's not dead. He is alive. We celebrate. We celebrate that this morning. We celebrate that. There's just a few things we want to bring to your attention. A few things. A few things we want to bring your attention as we move. Uh, move it further in the services. We want you uh, want to say a quick word. Um, our uh, Sister Dixon uh, is a uh, contributing author and uh, editor to a women's devotional. Uh, amen. amen. Uh, it's called called Strength and Strength and Dignity. Uh, it's going to be available on Mother's Day. Available Mother's Day. There are some push cards out there in the foyer. We want you to take one of those, and we want you to uh, purchase uh, those uh, devotionals. It's a 40-day devotional uh, written by several women um, uh, that contributed to that work, and we want to definitely be a blessing to Sister Dixon. Amen. Amen. And um, she'll be available on Mother's Day. Uh, she'll be available on Mother's Day to uh, sign books. Amen. 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 So we thank God for, for that. Um, want to say uh, I believe it's Sister Washington's birthday today. Amen. We thank God for her. Uh, Sister Washington, another birthday. Listen, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Uh, anytime you celebrate another birthday, you ought to be excited. Amen. 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 So we, we say happy birthday to Sister Washington this morning. Amen. Amen. We will ask that you will remember uh, those who are sick and shut in. Uh, those who stand in, we all stand in the need of prayer, uh, but there are people who uh, are dealing with various issues in life, and we ask that you would keep them lifted in your, in your prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, our youth, a uh, few of our youth are, are going to come uh, and make a few uh, presentations at this time. Sister Veronica, would you have them? Uh, come in the order that you uh, see fit. Can we encourage them this morning? Hey, come on, you can do better than that. Can we encourage them? Hey, Amen. We celebrate. We celebrate. Listen, we got to learn how to celebrate them when they do well. Amen. We talk about them when they mess up. We got to celebrate when they do when they do well. So we're going to turn it over uh, to uh, Sister Veronica. And uh, a few of our youth are going to make some Easter presentations. Yeah. 
he's not here for his rising, and he said, "Come see the place where the Lord lay." Matthew 28, verse 6. John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believe, the one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Jesus is Jesus came here for all of us for his glory will be saved be free. The meaning of Easter is color, well, color eggs and chocolate bunnies, a rainbow of jelly beans. But how many people truly know what Easter really means? Easter is a time of promise that God has given to man. It's a culmination of his redemption plan. Amen. Jesus did an impossible. He got up and well, happy Easter. AJ. <laughs> Religious Easter. Let us be more like Jesus in everything we do. Let's live a life of service, a life that's fresh and new. Let's re relinquish worldly things and not be slaves to fashion. Let's let us let's fill our hearts with love, forgiveness, and compassion. Yes, let's be more like Jesus, being always in God's will. For as Jesus' life shines through us, our earthly purpose will be fulfilled. Red is for the blood he gave. <coughs> Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sunflowers so bright. Black is for the dark of night. White is for the grace he gave. Orange is for the sun he made. Purple is for the hours of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. A bag full of jelly beans. Colorful and sweet is a prayer, a promise, and a child's tree. Program. 
Happy with Wrist.
thank you for this another day for another opportunity to stand and to proclaim a word on your behalf Lord how we love you we celebrate you we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in our place take on our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness Lord we're ever grateful for the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ we celebrate today we celebrate every day because every day is a day of thanksgiving Speak to us now, Lord. Your people are listening. We need to hear a word from you. Always our prayer is that the words of our mouths, the meditations of our heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength. You are our redeemer. The grass does wither. The flowers do fade. But the word of God remains the same. You get the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask that you continue to pour us out blessings. We don't have room to receive. It is these blessings and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. and amen. If you love him, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. Thank God for you and your presence here this morning. We thank God for the voices of steeple can we celebrate them this morning thank god for our musicians our deacons our officials and our ushers who stand so graciously and serve so well we thank god for you and you didn't our youth do a great job amen 
Amen. Thank you, Sister Veronica and uh, our youth, uh, our youth group. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and one verse. From Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and verse number 5. You have it, say amen. Find these words recorded there, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes hmm, we are healed. He may be seated in the presence of our God. Allow me, if you will, to speak on this wise this morning. He picked up the tab. He picked up the tab. Nigga Sneed, I've been in church. All of my life, I was raised and reared in the church at Ebenezer Baptist Church, 600 Ebenezer Road, Strong, Arkansas, 71765. Grew up at 171 Union 730. Gussie and Sammy Greer was the homeowner. My grandmother was a Sunday school teacher, choir director. My grandfather was an usher. I was in the youth choir, youth usher board, had to participate in every activity my granny deemed necessary. Y'all heard what I said. I, I didn't have a choice. Whatever she said do, that's what I did. While growing up in church, I heard one familiar story over and over again. And maybe you didn't go to church as much as I did, but even if you went every once in a while, even if you only showed up like some of us do Christmas, Mother's Day and Easter. You heard one familiar story. You heard the preacher declare he died one Friday. He was buried in a grave and early <laughs> on the third day morning. He got up with all power in his hands. All of my life I've heard he died. I, he, he died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the earth reeled and rocked like a drunk man. He died until the moon dripped away in blood. Died until the centur centurion soldier said, surely Somebody else heard that story. This must be the son of the living God. Die, but early. Old preacher said right early. Sunday morning he got up. It's a familiar story. 
It's a story over 2,000 years old, but it still has power and significance today. Even though I knew the story, I could recite the story. As a child, I didn't quite know and understand the significance the story had on my life. What does him dying have to do with me? What did it mean that he was buried and stayed in the grave and on Sunday morning he rose from the dead? I know he died for your sins and my sins, but what does this whole Christocentric he died on a tree thing have to do with me? Bills will still do. Friends can still stab you in the back. Folks still talk about you. It still rains when drops fall from the sky. What does it have to do with me? Come closer. Lend me your ear and let me see if I can answer your inquisitive question. Some years ago, Deacon Giles, a good friend of mine, in fact, I consider him one of my brothers, was about to get married. He invited me and some others to a weekend in Miami, Florida. Now, I can't tell you everything. Can't tell you everything that happened in Miami. Some of y'all too safe for that and might ask me to resign as pastor. Dig hell, I can't tell it all. But, but, but while there, we went to eat Deacon Giles at an upscale restaurant called Prime 112. Upscale, you, you know, the kind of restaurant where the main course and the sides have to be purchased separately. You, you know the kind of restaurant where the steak is 50 or $60. The, the, the waiter came over and, and took our drink orders, and then she took the order for our appetizers, then our main course and sides, and finally she brought us a dessert menu. You know, you can't just bypass a good dessert menu. Some of us grew up in a house where there was always something sweet on the table. You, you, you could put it in your mouth when dinner was done. You understand. You, you can't pass up a good dessert menu when there's something on there that's just calling your name. That, that was one of our friends who ordered more food than he had the money to pay for. Apparently, uh, Brother Jamal, he didn't read the fine print. He thought he was at Longhorns where the main course uh, includes the meat and your sides. You, you, you could tell he was nervous when the rape just came to the table with the bill. We're all at the table with our credit cards and debit cards getting ready to pay for our meal and the adult beverages. Y'all looking at me funny. But our friend is looking nervous. He leans over to our friend who had invited us to this weekend in Miami and says to him, I don't have enough money to pay for my bill. When the waitress comes over to the table, she comes with an announcement that shocks us all. She says to us, I've got some good news for you all. We all gave her our full attention to see what the good news was all about. Someone, uh, so one of us asked, what's the good news? She said, well, it's great news in fact. Ma'am, what's the great news? One of the guys asked at the table. She said, someone else has picked up the tab. You, you don't owe us nothing. They even picked up gratuity. Can you imagine, Sister Kirkendall, the relief 
of our friend who didn't have enough money at the amount uh, and the amount of surprise on our face because that wasn't a cheap bill. We we all started looking around and wanted to know who had done such a kind gesture. There was no one else in the restaurant we knew. We had no affiliation with anyone besides the people at the table. Who would cover the tab of a bill over a thousand dollars? To our surprise, our friend, the one who invited us on the excursion to Miami for his bachelor's weekend had picked up the tab in full. Now, I'm a preacher. I, I, I'm, sister, sister from Bell, I'm the preacher in the bunch. And even though I'm in Miami with my brothers and friends enjoying these festivities, I'm a gospel preacher, and I often find ways to relate life scenarios to Scripture. Uh, I was, we were in Mexico, and, and, and me and my wife were sitting out by the pool, and, and there were some ants uh, 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 moving around. They were carrying uh, some stuff. And, and, and I looked, I said, uh, look how hard those ants are working. Uh, I, I said, that, 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 that looks like some inscription found in script how hard the ant works to get food from one place, carrying stuff twice their body weight. I, I'm a preacher. And so I said to myself, it sounds like Jesus to me. For in the day when my sin created a tail, who else but Jesus would have picked it up for me? Oh, let me move, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 53. He looks through the portal of prophetic utterances and realities that would be placed by God himself and utters these words. He was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed beloved the shock of the morning is not only was Isaiah right but he gives us the entire plan of salvation in one verse hear them again my brothers and sisters that it might sink in for you this morning but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Because they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall, we are pardoned, we are forgiven, we are healed. Can I ask you a question? How would you shout if I were to tell you he picked up your tail. What, 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 uh, uh, what would you say, Brother Jerry, to someone who knew you had expenses you couldn't pay but said, excuse me, it's too much for them, hand me the bill. Brothers and sisters, what would you say to someone who paid your light bill, your water bill, your car note, your insurance, your credit card statement? How would you handle them? And I say to you, beloved, if you have a thank you for them, you better have a hallelujah on your tongue for what happened on the cross. For on that hill that day, I wish I had some help. He paid it all. All to him I, oh, sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy. 
John said it like this, for God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son that whosoever leaveth in him, not perish but have everlasting life. I, I need to show you this. Uh, first thing my friend did, uh, Big Steve, he paid the bill for the drinks and the adult beverages. Uh, the meal was over. And, and it had, it had been, uh, first thing they do when they come to the table is they get your drink order. Am I right about it? Hold on. If eating meat offends your brother, you shouldn't eat meat around. In other words, uh, if you are around people who think you can't drink because they think you are a Christian, then don't drink that day. B because, Sister Green, your drinking could mess up their faith. However, Sister Porter, if you are mature enough, you'll realize it's not a sin to drink. It's a sin for you to be intoxicated. But every now and then, I have peers and people I love who will peruse the confines of a drink menu and switch from iced tea to Long Island iced tea. <laughs> Are y'all praying with me? They, they switch from uh, uh, things like water on the rocks to Ciroc without rocks. When my brother, Sister Angela, paid the bill, he picked up the tab for the drink orders and the adult beverages. Amen. Beloved, hear the words of Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. Did you know there's a difference between transgressions, iniquities, lawlessness, rebellion, and disobedience? You see, sin has different labels. The word transgression connotates and suggests a harmful breach. It suggests to us a sin that not only exists, but we also enjoy and get others to participate in it. Y'all stay with me. Dr. John Adolph says, transgressions are those moments that cause us to go backwards temporarily instead of forward faithfully. Come closer. For all of you extra holy transgressors, <laughs> listen, there are some things that cause us to transgress the law. Hold on. You didn't just walk off from God, but it was a moment where it wasn't going forward, so it took you backwards. Listen, there are some things, there are some of us who enjoy something mixed with Coke from time to time. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, 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 it does not mean I'm not saved. It doesn't mean I've walked away from God. It means I had a moment. Y'all better help me up in here. Y'all better say something before I call your drink. You, y'all play holy on me this morning. And if the truth be told, we all have some moments that take us backwards and not forward. For all of you, Las Vegas traveling, what happens in Vegas? Hey. Ha, ought to stay in Vegas. For all of you slot 
pulling, button pushing. Let me anoint my machine and ask God for a win today. For all of you who cuss when things are tight and when you do stuff you should not do, I've got great news for you. There's a tab brewing with your name on it every time. There's a mistake, a mishap, a miscue, a mess up. There's a tab rolling. God has not forgotten, but can I give you this shout on Resurrection Sunday? He picked up the tab. Watch this, beloved. Watch this. If, if this weren't true, I'd have to preach another gospel. What happened on Calvary in the past, what happened on Calvary happened in the past with effects on the future. What happened on Calvary happened in the past with effects on the future. And from the lips of Isaiah, it's going to happen in the future with effects on the past. When Isaiah pins these words, he writes them looking through a portal of prophecy. He can see that heel shaped like a skull, and he says to us, he was wounded. It's the word pierced. He was bodily wounded. It was not mere mental sorrow. He was literally pierced. It means he was stabbed. His hands were nailed. They riveted his feet. Why? Because he paid a debt that he did not owe because we had a debt we could not pay. The cause of his sufferings was not the cause of his own, but the cause of his sufferings was for our sins. Our sins were the thorns in his head, the nails in his hands, spear in his side. Peter writes, he bore, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you've been healed. Get this, and every time there is a transgression in your life, you ought to say to yourself, but he picked up the tab. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. That does not mean you can live fragrantly. But it does mean you can hold on to God's hand faithfully. It's not for you to use grace as a ticket to sin. It's for you to use grace as a right to live holy. He, he took care, uh, Sister Lula, he took care of the drinks and the adult beverages. But when he paid the bill, he took care of the appetizers and the main courses. The day was over. Uh, we had had an event for day that day. And, and we were hungry. We were ready to eat. And some folk didn't just order from the main menu. They had the unmitigated gall to order appetizers. And some folk had the nerve that they didn't even want to share. Uh Give me some oysters. Another one wanted spinach dip. Somebody else wanted fondue. Another one wanted mozzarella sticks. Just hardening up stuff. Like they were at the Food Network. Like they were one of the judges on a cooking show. Brothers and sisters, the tab was outlandish. I told you a steak was $50. It was the first time I ever went to a restaurant where I had to pay $50 for a steak. I said to myself, what cow?
The one that grew up in Ebenezer, I don't think we uh, pay $50. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> and there were a number of us at the table. And yet my brothers and sisters, when the bill came, it was high. There were people who ordered drinks, adult beverages, appetizers, and the main course. The bill was racked up. It was not just a three-digit bill, but a four-digit bill. And you do know when the party is five or more, they add 21% gratuity. But here's the shout. There was somebody in the restaurant. Who picked up the tab? Can I ask you a question? If you had to add up every sin you've ever committed, how much would you owe God? Well, Charlie. Wait, how, how much would you owe God for the stuff that you knew was wrong? And how much would you owe God for the stuff you did that you didn't know was wrong? And how much would you owe God for the stuff, watch this, you can't stop doing? Oh, you, 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 you want to stop, you really, you really stop, you're really trying to stop, but you just can't. And how much would you owe God for the secret sins you commit? Pride. Arrogance. Uppitness. You know, some of us are uppity. It, it, it don't take much. Give us two extra pennies. And we about to lose our mind. Think we better than Somebody else, because you got two more nickels than I. Truth is, all of us one paycheck away. If we miss one paycheck, we in trouble. I, I wish I had some witnesses up in here. We walk around with our nose in the air like we better than somebody. Listen, how much would you owe God for the mistakes you made in the past but don't make any more? The bill is racked high. But listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. I like the word iniquity. And iniquity is a sin that you know is a sin, but you lean on mercy and the tolerance of God not to punish you for it. <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, I got another question for you. Uh, how many iniquities do you have? Br brothers and sisters, hear this shout for the morning. He was bruised for every one of those. Uh, he, he was marched from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was beaten with 39 stripes, one short of 40, with a cat of nine tails of a Roman soldier. He was bruised beyond measure. The gospel synoptic writers say that when they looked at him on the cross, he looked like one big bloody bruise. They didn't stick a thumbtack in his hand. They nailed his hand. They didn't stick a thumbtack in his feet. They riveted his feet. They did not give him Novocaine for the pain. He endured the cross and despised the shame. Come here, let's look at Calvary. Let's talk about Calvary. Can you hear the hammer ringing? Can you hear the pain happening? Can you hear him crying out, it is finished? Hang his head in the locks of his shoulder, and then he died. Beloved child of God, Here's what he did. For the main entrees of your iniquities, 
for the stuff we've done that was messed up, jacked up, mixed up. He was hung for every hang up. I like that. He was hung up for our hang ups. That, that's what this morning is about. For every hang up that you have, he was hung up in the stand for every one of them. I got to get out of here. But how would you shout if I told you for every hang up that you have, past, present, and future, he hung for every one of them? What God would have done to you for yours, he did for us for himself. Isaiah says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Isaiah says, the correction that is inflicted on a child for their own good. Have y'all heard that from mama when she was whooping you? Anybody go back down memory lane just then? That, that I'm doing this for you. Sure don't feel like good to me. But I told, I told my children not too long ago, uh, mother, I told them, uh, I, I stay out a whole lot of stuff now because of them switches I got. Back then, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. It keeps me out of a, I'm 41 years old, and I can remember what would happen to me if I got into some stuff, Brother Hamilton. And she would say, I'm doing this for your own good. Jesus took it upon himself. That kind of punishment that we might have peace with God. Paul says, for he himself is our peace. Anybody here know he is the prince? Huh, he's the prince of peace. Anybody here know that he'll keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep it stayed on him. My brothers and sisters, the prophet Isaiah says he took the chastisement upon himself when the waitress brought the bill to the table. Our friend told her, just put it all on my credit card. He took the entire bill upon himself. I looked at him and I said, boy, don't know what kind of money you make. But I sure do thank you. <laughs> I wish I had some help in the room. D don't miss your shout this morning. That's what Jesus did for us. When our sin debt came due, he said, just charge the whole bill to my account. Put it all on me. The debt was enormous, but he paid it all. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But, but do you know they brought us the dessert tray? Uh, he, he, he paid for the desserts and the things, lastly, that we didn't need. You, 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 you do know you order some stuff <laughs> sometimes that you don't need. They brought us the dirt, the dessert tray over to us and asked us what we wanted. They 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 brought it over to us and said, "Come on, you 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 have to have dessert, cheesecake, ice cream, triple chocolate cake, chocolate brownie with ice cream." And just because we're in Miami and we're at Prime One Twelve. We just ordering all kinds of stuff just to be ordering. Unnecessary. Remind me when me and the wife went to Mexico a little while ago, we were just ordering and eating stuff because we could. 
I think one night we called room service three times. I said, he going <laughs> he gonna get tired of us after a while. But Sister Henry said, call me if you need me. We, we were just all the, <laughs> the, finally, finally the moment of reckoning. <laughs> the bill came. And when the bill got there, everybody reached for their credit cards and debit cards, except for that one friend who. <laughs> it's always one. Yeah, it's, it's always one you got to treat like a child. You just go prepared for pay for somebody. We, we didn't know someone had healed us already. <laughs> the word healed means to fix the breach, to tie the ends together. He healed us at the cross. He built a bridge between a holy God and sinful people, between divinity and humanity, between righteousness and sinfulness, between holiness and wretchedness, between light and darkness. He picked up the whole tale. Listen, it's time to go. It's time to leave the restaurant. And the waitress says, good news, someone has picked up the tab. We asked who? At that moment, our brother, friend, and host spoke up and said, put your cards away. Don't worry about it. I got the bill for everybody. The waitress said, you guys ought to be grateful because he paid the whole bill. And it wasn't cheap. You all have a good friend. And I said to myself, because I'm a Baptist preacher, sound like Jesus to me. Yeah. He paid the whole bill. And it was not cheap. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. For it cost him everything. Do I have a witness? Yeah, we got up from the table. Doggy bags, toothpicks. And swollen stomachs with all of the sins we've committed at that table looked at our friend and simply said two words I'm signing off this morning but we looked at him and said uh, two words we simply told him, uh, thank you. You didn't have to pick up the tab, uh, but thank you. You didn't have to do it, but we surely do appreciate it. Thank you uh, for picking up the bill. And I'm out of here this morning, uh, but you ought to tell God, uh, thank you uh, for picking up the tab for the sins I've committed in my past. Thank you uh, for picking up the tab for the sins I'm committing in my present. <laughs> Thank you uh, for picking up my tab for my future sins. <laughs> Thank you uh, for picking up my tab. <laughs> Is there anybody here? <laughs> You're glad this morning <laughs> that God <laughs> 
picked up your tab. You're glad I gotta get out of here. But you're glad this morning that he died on Calvary's hill. Is there anybody here? You're glad this morning they put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. Is there anybody here? You're glad this morning that he died on Calvary, but he didn't stay dead. Do I have a witness here? I heard death tell somebody, if you get him to me, I'll hold him. Do I have a witness here? I hear death telling the grave, if you get him to me, I'll hold him and won't let him rise. Do I have a witness here? And it looked like the grave was going to hold him. He stayed there Friday night. Stayed there Saturday morning. And I heard death check back in and say, grave, do you still have him? And I heard the grave say, I got Abraham, I got Isaac, I got Jacob, I can hold Jesus. Do I have a witness here? But the grave forgot that Jesus said in three days, I raise the triple again. Do I have a witness here? He forgot that Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men under me. He forgot that Jesus said, no man take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I can pick it up again. Yeah, I hear the grave saying I still got him. And it looked like he was going to hold it and not let him rise. He stayed there Saturday evening. Stayed there Saturday night. But I heard, yeah, the grave tell death. I don't know what happened, but early this morning, before the rooster said cock a doo do before the dew kissed the grass, I don't know what happened. He got up, walking out of the grave, and he said, I got all power in my hand. Ain't he all right? He got up out of the grave. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? He lives, he lives. Shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives, and one of these old days, he'll put one foot on the land, another foot on the sea, wrap time in eternity, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! I know. 
know he's all right. I gotta go, but can you do me one favor? Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, I don't know what it done for you. I don't know where it brought you from, but there's one thing, one thing that I know. I know he's all right. Some of you didn't say nothing. Look at your name. Tell him you don't know what he done for me. You don't know how many doors he's opened. You don't know how many ways he made. You don't know how he healed my body. You don't know how he saved my soul. You don't know how he made me whole. You don't know. You don't know. But I know he's all right. Almost lost my mind. Almost gave up. Almost threw in the towel. I know he's all right. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! up the tab. You can't shout about anything else. You ought to be able to shout over the fact this morning that he paid your bill in full. When you think back over your life, matter of fact, we ain't even got to go back that far. You think about the stuff you did this week. If you're alive, you got to run and tell. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short. Grace of God. has forgiven us and all he says we have to do is ask for forgiveness I'm happy this morning that the church is not a place for perfect people watch this all of us in here are ex-somethings 
And then all of us in here are currently dealing with some stuff that disqualifies us out of the judgment seat. We are all sinners saved by the grace The reason what you did didn't take you out was because of God's grace. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, I, I know, I know you're saved and I know you carry your big Bible. Uh, but the reason your stuff wasn't uncovered, the reason you weren't exposed is because you were covered in God's grace. You, you, you're not better than the person who was exposed. God just covered you this time and didn't allow the enemy to expose your mess. And so that's why you all have a heart of thank you. That's why you all have a heart of gratefulness and open up your mouth and tell God, thank you for covering me. I don't deserve all that God has done. I don't deserve it. But I thank him for his favor. I thank him that he that he favored me. He paid the bill paid it in full it wasn't an IOU he said debt cancel see the enemy goes before God and accuses us and sister Clark his accusations are true he is a liar he is a thief. But sometimes what he tells God on us is the truth. He, he's our adversary, but thank God we have an advocate. We have somebody who speaks to God on our behalf. And when the enemy goes to accuse us, Jesus says, I picked up the tab. I paid the bill in full. I shed my blood on Calvary to cover it all. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended for the acceptance of members by letter Christian experience or as candidates for baptism. The Bible declares the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you feel him knocking on the chambers of your heart, you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you. If you're in the sanctuary, you can get up from your seat. Walk this aisle. Give the preacher your hand and give the Lord your heart. Make him the Lord and Savior of your life. You need to know today that we're all sinners, but Jesus picked up your tab. He's forgiven you. He's washed your slate clean. He'll make your life brand new, but you've got to come to him and accept him. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Christ Jesus died and rose from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. We extend that invitation. If you're watching us virtually, you can inbox us or call us and let us know what your desire is. We'd love to have you be a part of the family of faith. Perhaps you're saved. You know you're saved. Salvation in a question, but you're looking for a church home. Steeple would love to be your family. I would love to be your pastor. We are loving, growing, building congregation. We love God. We grow people. We build connections. We would love to have you become a part of this family.
Again, if you're watching us virtually, you can inbox us. You can call us. Let us know what your desire is if you're here in the sanctuary. Get up from where you are. Walk this aisle and become a part of a church who's trying to be the best God is calling us to be. We extend that invitation. Do not pass me by. I'm calling you Savior. Savior. Why don't you hear my arm? By. God bless you. God bless you. I'm calling you Savior. Savior. Why don't you hear my oh, cry? Savior, do not pass me by. Come on, can you give God praise? Come on, come on, can you give him? Give him. Were you helped by the message? Were you blessed by the message? God bless you and God keep you. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's time to give. And the Lord loves a, he loves a cheerful giver. And we ask that you would give in that attitude and in that way. What a blessing it is to be able to give. The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom we thank you for your gifts and we thank you for your obedience in sowing into this ministry know that you're sowing into good ground and we pray God blesses you for your obedience to his word there are several ways for you to give. You can text to give, 318-924-3008. 318-924-3008. You can cash app us at dollar sign, steeplechase BC. If you're watching online, there's a Give Now tab. Click that tab will take you to our easy tithe giving platform. You can give that way. In the sanctuary, if you're giving in a traditional means, fill out your envelope. Make sure you leave it in the buckets in the back as you exit the sanctuary. There are love offering envelopes available as well. Those go to the pastor if you want to and desire to sow into the life of the pastor. Mail your gift, 7016 Steeplechase Plaza Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71129, or drop your gift off here at the church. We'll be happy to direct your funds in the direction you would have for them to go. Multiple ways. We pray that you take advantage of one of those ways to give. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the ones who are sowing. Thank you for their obedience. Thank you for them placing your house as a priority. Now, God, I pray that you would bless them 
in ways that will blow their minds. That they'll know it was nobody but you that made ways out of no ways. Open doors that were clothed in their faces. Ordered their steps. Bless us now as only you can. Let this offering be used for the benefit that it was given. It is these blessings and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you again for making your way to the house of God. Being in the house of prayer. Amen. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Remember to pick up a, a, um, a placard out there uh, for the strength and dignity so you'll be reminded. Again, it's, it's, it's going to be available Mother's Day. Mother's Day is fast approaching. It's, it's uh, the second Sunday in May. Amen. And we're already almost to the fourth Sunday in April. Uh, so it's fastly approaching. And again, we congratulate Sister Dixon on being a contributing author to that book. I wanted to uh, also remi uh, announce that uh, there's, there's a couple of people who are going to be graduating uh, anybody, anybody going to be graduating that I that I don't know of? Um, brother Chris, brother Chris Travis, Christopher Travis, is going to be graduating from airline. Uh, I believe it's May the fourteenth. Uh, Adajua uh, Clark sent me something on Facebook that she'll be graduating uh, May the seventh, I believe, from Wiley. Uh, amen. Uh, so uh, those are the two. Uh, that I am aware of, and so we are going to celebrate and congratulate them on a job well done. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, listen, uh, I ain't going to tell y'all to go and not eat too much. Uh, I don't know what y'all cooked for Easter. My mama is in North Carolina, uh, so we're supposed to go to my sister's. Y'all pray for me. She talking about having brunch. I said brunch for Easter. We gonna have French toast and eggs and bake. What? Y'all pray. Y'all pray for me. I told told my mama, don't you leave no more out of town on no holiday. <laughs> Let's stand all over the building. Let's stand. Again, we say happy birthday to Sister Washington. Hey, may Greg take you somewhere where one of them steaks cost $60. <laughs> Make him take you somewhere nice. Amen. Now may the grace of our God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit